DuckTales Season 3 Episode 7 The Rumble for Ragnarok The uh, mm. last uh, episode before hiatus Um mm, Not the hiatus, that sounds awful Well, uh, That's like what, what do you want, a break? What do you want to call it? <laughs> they stop, no, they stop like putting it. out I... episodes I just don't like waiting a long time in general for a new episode. Yeah. Anyway, um, so the cartoon we, makers' holiday. We've 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 got uh, we've got pro wrestling and Norse Smith. <laughs> they go well with each other, I apparently. <laughs> But yeah, it's. Uh, I would have been as I, I would have been as lost as Dewey. I mean Huey. I admit it. <laughs> yeah, I. It's another time where I'm like, yeah, that's the yeah. you. <laughs> I'm like, I feel you, Hugh. <laughs> but, I feel Hugh. <laughs> but, it it. It didn't make a lot of sense at first with the, um, like, when you're watching it without knowing what's coming, it's like, when, and he's like, Dewey, no, not, not you, like, it's like, why not, he's just as, he's even more adventuresome than most of them, he and Webby are essentially kind of two of a kind in that regard, though, uh, um, the dynamic duo yeah like you and i understand webby is better at, at, at this sort of thing but like he's still you know and it was because he had because he had to be a heel he had to go out there and be a be the bad guy and that's just not what dewey is good at <laughs> and it it it's one of those things where they played with other than like Louis, which he basically just slipped right in and did what, like, did what Louis, Louis does. And, what? Yeah, Louis. He was Louis to an L. <laughs> he was, he was himself. He was, Llewellyn was, he was exactly what you expect him to be. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, there's a huge pro wrestling tournament for the, for the, you know, for the world, you know, world's future. Um, I'm gonna sell t-shirts. I'm gonna tell Seven. Uh, hey, <laughs> you, I'm assuming we're gonna win. I'm basically play? betting we're gonna win, so I'm gonna invest my time this way. <laughs> How did you know the persona I was gonna create and the catchphrase I was gonna use, and what they would say against me? <laughs> I've known you my whole life. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> He's literally known you your, your entire life, like. <laughs> Other than maybe some time when you were hatching it, but if he hatched last, which it's hard to say who you know, we don't know, do we? Who hatched first? But it would be like seconds. Other than maybe seconds outside of the egg, he's known you basically entire life. Um, but yeah, and. and Dewey's used to being charismatic, so in in I'm likable, and then just like nope. <laughs> it was kind of funny Dewey to see. Him. Go ahead. Uh, Dewey does not like being disliked. <laughs> yeah, just as much as Huey doesn't like being out of his depth. <laughs> well, he doesn't mind being out of his depth so long as he can grasp it. <laughs> He can understand it eventually. Like if he can pick it up reasonably well, he doesn't mind. But or he can jump jump to his guidebook. But like, yeah, just completely out of his depth and has no idea what he's doing. <laughs> Which Launchpad does that all the time, but <laughs> it works here. <laughs> uh, but he. But he it flips here, but, uh... Like, wait, am I 
the launch pad? <laughs> he's, yeah, he's the launch pad. Uh, and uh, and Scrooge as the heel is just <laughs> so perfect. Uh. And Webby was just Webby <laughs> because. <laughs> Yeah, the characterizations in this were just perfect. It was, it was, it was one of the more character-driven bits in the, you know, there's, there's a story, yes, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of character bits and, and them sort of confronting some of their own insecurities. Fail. Yeah, insecurities, failings, yeah. that sort of thing. You know, dealing with that sort of thing, and the basically, I mean, for the most part, everybody but Louis got their uh, oh, the corn episode, the the golden armory of Cornelius Coot. What what Webby got with that, they got with this. Yeah. Um. And then Louie got his, I think, when he had that uh, episode with, um, oh, what's her face? Uh, the, oh, Goldie. the thief. The... Goldie. <laughs> yeah, Goldie. <Andy>. River. <laughs> yeah, River. <laughs> she, she's River. It's what. She... <laughs> Goldie Song. Yeah. Yeah, she's. Yeah, she she's 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 basically River, <laughs> but uh, um, which that would have been an interesting casting if they'd gotten Alex Kingston to play. Yes, <laughs> that would have been a funny casting. <laughs> it's like it this is would. she could do a good American accent. I mean, she's played Americans before. Well, she doesn't even need to do that. Like, mm -hmm. well, can... Goldie the character Goldie is uh, is American. Like is. And how long has she been around? Has she been around since the original series? Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe. She, she but... was around she, in the original series. She was a um. She was around during the gold rush, and she was one of the panhandlers. I think they're called. Well, you know, 49ers. In the gold... yeah. yeah. You know what I mean. The, yeah, panners for gold. and pan for gold. Yeah. yeah. Panhandling would be begging, but that's what I thought. But I'm yeah. like, wait, I yeah, know it has yeah. something to do with pan. pan. Panning, panning for gold is a thing. Panhandling is begging, but yeah, I mean, we've had alternate takes to characters before, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, we Magica went from uh, being Middle Eastern to uh, being. Vaguely. English, yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's it it wouldn't be the first time people have changed voice voice accents, and I think it would be it would be really funny. It's like, well, and, it would and be just, a little too on the nose. It would be a little too on the nose. Yes, if, but, if they didn't have um, Catherine Tate as Magica, Magica then I'd say yeah. But having Catherine Tate and Alex Kingston alongside David Tennant is just a little too much, uh, a, a little too... Who Balderdash. <laughs> Balderdash. Gargoyles had basically the cast of the next generation. <laughs> <laughs> what had the cast of next generation? Gargoyles. The, the Gargoyles oh. cartoon. Go look at the cast for that. <laughs> yeah, I'll look it up while we're discussing it. But yeah, um, but yeah, they basically had like a good chunk of the uh, uh, yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, they. Uh... It's it's kind of sad that Miss Beakley lost. I know. I understand why they had her lose. Because no. in order to allow Dewey to have his moment in the sun, so to speak. Yeah, now but, I can't remember, but was she always with them or did D she just randomly pop up? That's why Webby had to stall. Because as soon as Scrooge threw his back out, he called Beakley as backup. Okay. But it took Beakley time to get there. So while Beakley had to get there, Webby had to stall. Huh. Okay. And then Launchpad just gets taken out in one shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's not news. Not much of a surprise there. Like, he may be a big duck, but he's, he's not that... <laughs> he's a big dunce. <laughs> yeah, if you look at it, there's a whole page of just cast members of, of Star Trek that were also in uh, in Gargoyles. Marina Sirtis, Jonathan Frakes, uh, Michelle, Michelle Nichols, Michael Dorn, Brent Spiner, um, the Colmini, Kate Mulgrew, LeVar Burton, Avery Brooks. Uh, see. Yeah, there's just you just yeah. I mean, it's the main character was, was well, uh, I forget what the main character was. Yeah, you just, you, you can go down and there's, it's a weird thing. I don't know why that particular happened, but yeah, it's not been like it's never done before. You know, there's loads of. The, the main characters were Demona and, um, yeah. The, what's his name? Goliath. Yeah. And what was that girl's name? Start with an E, I think. Like Emily, Elizabeth, something like that. Well, that would be Clifford the Big Red Dog, but. <laughs> Emily no, Elizabeth. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway, the, the point being, it, it's, it's not like it's never been done before, but. It, I don't know, it might be distracting, but it was just sort of a fun thought. It's like, Gargoyles did it. Why not DuckTales? But yeah, it would have but it would have been a little too spot it might have been a bit too spot on <laughs> on the nose sort of Yeah what what, it, what it she's done before. Little... <laughs> yeah, it would have been a little too much. But still, it would have been fun. Probably would have been yeah. too expensive too. So, eh. yeah, Alex Kingston's a pretty big name, I think, isn't yeah. she? Yeah. Well, yeah, enough David that that people, you know, I, I think she's, she's 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 in a lot of stuff, so I don't know. Yeah, but I don't know what her demands are, but I think she would have. I, I think she would have if it was just for an episode or two, you know, because Goldie doesn't show up that often. Yeah. Like, if she played it every, every couple of times, I think she might find it fun enough to revisit that sort of character just for fun. But then again, she might be worried about being typecast. True. Uh, um, well, she does She does do River and Big Finish, too. Yeah. I, and she's done, like, other characters in Big Finish. Yeah, it's not like she's a stranger to voice acting. Yeah, but, exactly. But, yeah, she's... That would have been that. It would it, again. It might have been a little on the nose to have Alex Kingston there. Yeah, just they can never <laughs> like, go to a library. A wait a second. <laughs> yeah, I've seen this before. But <laughs> I don't like. I don't. I don't. You know, <laughs> like he has to try and romance Goldie to do something. Like, well, we could go to a library. No, we're not going to a library. No. 
<laughs> well, no, this is the Golden Library. <laughs> Still, no. <laughs> Don't... And she goes around calling him sweetie all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is the youngest I've ever met you. <laughs> or the oldest. <laughs> uh, but... Hard to tell in duck years. No, yeah, Goldie's River song. She is. Yeah, just that's. She has that. That's probably the easiest, the easiest Doctor Who cross to make. Yeah, it's like, oh yeah, no, that's. Well, that and Tennant, of course. Oh yeah, but that's that's already a given. Exactly. You know, well, in anything, in, anytime you bring any other Doctor Who alum over, you know, it would be, you know, it would be a cross. It becomes a crossover well, because you have Well, it's not just them. that. I mean, both the Doctor and Scrooge are like old as hell. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And and they're the saviors of the wor uh, world who do very esoteric things and are very much. The, you know, saving the world with random weird pieces of knowledge that they don't have to be liked as long as they're doing the right thing type characters like in this episode. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that Scrooge has time traveled. He has! Yeah. Remember the Christmas episode? <laughs> I just had the dumbest idea in the world. It doesn't cool. work. The voice doesn't match and everything. But uh, we're on Doctor Who alums. Oh. And I was like, Captain Jack is launch pad? <laughs> <laughs> he can no, already do Captain an American Jack accent. We know that. No, Captain Jack is Jamie McCrimmon because Darkwing Duck is the second Doctor. <laughs> oh. Or just have him as a guest spot as, like, Launchpad's brother. <laughs> or his cousin. We, in, the, in the original series, we found out that Launchpad is a part of this high-flying, like, um... Uh, what, what do you call the, like... Stunt pilots at those barnstormers. Like, no, like those shows and stuff. Well, the air like, shows or barnstormers. Yeah, the air shows. Or, yeah. Like he, his family is is the the great McQuacks who are these amazing air show stunt pilots. <laughs> Even his baby sister, who's was like I don't know a teenager or something in that. Uh, <laughs> but his entire family are stunt pilots. Yeah. So his dad being Jack Harkness would have, I mean, being uh, John Barrowman would have been perfect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck uh, up, dude. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, rumble for Ragnarok after getting off on Doctor Who weird casting ideas. <laughs> Crossover casting. Um, <sighs> so, uh, yeah, so gets the crowd against uh, Jorben Gunder and takes him out, saves the day. You know, third, everything works out. I'm not the hero they want, but I'm the hero they need. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was a lot of f it was, it was fun. It was good writing. The characters were very in character. They there was some nice development there. Magical beard hair makes you strong. <laughs> yes. Yeah, they set it it's up. Kind of you you can't. It, they it's set kind it up. Of a Rapunzel. <laughs> yeah, they they set it up in the in the beginning, so hey, you know it's not like they they came out of nowhere. It's like oh yeah, yep. hmm. 
We already set this up earlier in the episode. It's a little deus ex machina to a certain extent, but we already, a little bit, but we'd already set it up earlier in the, in the uh, episode. And so we already works. knew something like that was going to happen anyways. <laughs> because uh, with Webby knocked out, the only way Dewey could win is with some sort of superpower. Well, there's there's two ways. It's like either he gets a superpower or he does something clever. <laughs> it's is... Dewey. You never know. I mean, <laughs> he's he's an adventurer, so thinking on his feet. I mean, maybe not he the most. That's why Webby's a better adventurer, because Webby actually knows how to think. Well, I mean, you could have just had him go inside his own head and say, hey, what would Webby do? And then he does what, <laughs> what then he thinks, well, she'd probably do this, and then does that and wins. It's like, oh, yeah, uh, all right. <laughs> what would Webby do? Uh, this. <laughs> WWWD. <laughs> You mean www dot? No, no. it's www <laughs> What would Webby do? Yeah. Or he starts going through like, what would any what would anybody else do in the situation? And he just it's just like floating heads giving him advice. Like Launchpad is and completely the dumbest. The dumbest ideas too, like. <laughs> Completely out of character for them. <laughs> <laughs> like what he thinks. What he thinks they wrong. would say. Yeah, just like he thinks they would say, but the completely wrong. Like <laughs> he would, and Launchpad is the in his head would be the one to give him the right idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he could, yeah, or it just turns into to. To sort of mocking nonsense, like Huey is egghead, 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 egghead. Yeah. <laughs> it's not, he actually doesn't actually, and he, he has, like, a book open, and he's like, egghead, 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 egghead. <laughs> and it's like, uh, eh. he swipes it away, and it's like, Louie, it's like, money, 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 money. Money, money? Or just, just pay him off. <laughs> Rainbow chokehold. <laughs> Yeah, and then, uh... It's like, violence, violence, ooh, ponies! <laughs> and then, yeah, you just, you go through, <laughs> go through each one, and then, and then eventually, uh... No, what, what would have been the best way to end it, uh, to have him win, would be by accident. Because that is just totally Dewey. <laughs> just like... He he goes and um, accidentally trips him up. <laughs> yeah, and he goes flying out of the ring, and it's like, oh, Dewey won. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> or he, uh, or since he's a serpent, you know, he's he's cold blooded. But I know there's more a te better technical term for that, but I'll use that for now. He, he hits a soda stand or something with, like, a stray prop, hits a soda stand, knocks it into the air, like, knocks a bunch of ice at him and chills him out. And he just sort of, uh, he gets a little stunned, and then he, he, he just keeps pouring the ice back that's onto him when he knocks him off. That's really how cold-blooded works, but well, yeah. I mean, but and the, the term ice... is actually... The term is ectothermic plexus. Yeah, I know. I know what it, I know what the term is, but I just for the other for the audience out there. But yeah, yeah. trying to cool him down so that he you know he kind of slow his metabolism down so that he's not he's a little off. <laughs> <laughs> just slow because the metabolism is you know somewhat based on what their temperature is uh, and so they're okay. so you you piled ice on him he would slow down so he wouldn't have as much of a metabolism and then being a duck he's an endotherm so he, yeah and then he, he 
and you can get your science lesson in. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh yes, and we're also educational. <laughs> yeah, this this will slow down. <laughs> Please don't do this to actual animal, but Jormungandr is a mythical serpent. Yeah. You know. <laughs> But yes, this is not safe. <laughs> I agree with Dewey about the... I mean, Huey about... There are so many issues with this. <laughs> yeah, or something. Yeah, you could... This goes against all of science. It's like, Huey, what have we told you about magic? <laughs> but, but science... <laughs> but... <laughs> yeah, I mean, it wouldn't be like, oh... You can't... <laughs> Yeah, you know, you'd have to find a way to stick it to them, but yeah, if you already have them tripped and ice poured all over them, slow them down enough, and then oh, pin while he's <laughs> like, no, he didn't have to pin. That's the point. Oh yeah, it was Royale. That's oh god, yeah. So you could have just kind of shoved him off of the thing while he's kind of disoriented by the cold, or just you know trip him. Yeah, or or better yet, yeah, just have um have like. You know, something happened off off screen that sort of, you know, I don't know, some wackiness happens off screen. This is DuckTales. Somebody will do it. Um, <laughs> or, uh, and ice gets on the mat and he sort of... You don't need the ice. No, as a slippery agent to make him slip so that you can then push him off. Ice gets just too hot over there, so you're just thinking ice because you need to cool off. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just thinking of ways to make it slippery that would be at a sporting event. What's slippery at a sporting event? Ice. Blood. We can't. It's it's D Disney. You're not going to get much in the way of blood, and not certainly not enough to make the Jormungandr slip. But if a Tears. soda machine exploded or something happened or a slushy stand, you know, fell over or something and leaked onto the, and got onto the, the stage, or, then, then, and he or, pushed him into that, then yes, that would work. Or, or oil. you know, the, the, he goes to tackle him and Dewey ducks, <laughs> no uh. pun intended, and he just goes flying over him. Yeah, but that, that, I don't know, that's not quite as satisfying. <laughs> but, it's not, Probably it doesn't, you know. It, it, genuinely, you know, with the beard, because it's more satisfying. Yeah, oh yeah. Just... They could, they could, that was fine, yeah. But, you know, there were lots of other ways you could have done it. But, uh, that's an interesting way. Um, but yeah, that's, that, it was a fine way. I'm not complaining about that. I'm just thinking outside of the box for non-magical ways to defeat a giant snake monster in uh, in uh, in a royal rumble. Catch a <laughs> serpent by its tail. <laughs> <laughs> Except he's he's his tail is long enough he can come back around on you. <laughs> True. And frankly, the size of Dewey, he could probably just whip him with his tail. Dude, he picked Dewey up with his tail and just started bam, 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 bam. Yeah. So, I mean... Where's Pebble? Uh, where's... What was it? Rubble? Pebbles? From the Flintstones. Oh, Bam Bam. Yeah, Bam Bam, but then the girl... Yeah, it was Pebbles and Bam Bam. Pebbles the girl, okay, Bam Pebbles. Bam was the... Yeah. Just... Yeah. I mean, <laughs> catching him by the tail isn't really going to help matters. <laughs> you have to sort of knock him off his feet and while he's not quite stable, shove him out. <laughs> if you're going to do something other than, you know, the mystical beard buff <laughs> yeah because he's but too I strong think the whole, i think the whole point of that mystical beard thing wasn't so much him beating him up it was the fact that he still got his popularity win yeah 
And it's that moral of, you know, if you do the right thing enough, people will start to recognize that it is the right thing. Yeah, well, and the thing was, you know, Jormungandr was a... Uh, at least uh, in theory. <laughs> was a... Uh, he was a face. He was he was popular and whatnot. Like, and for most of the matches, he was doing the sort of honorable sort of thing. And so, you know, there was no... He wasn't losing the crowd on that until he started doing the... Uh, until he started, you know, sort of show... Not showboating, but kind of. Until he started doing he that. What? He was dicking off. Yeah. Until he started showing off, then... Uh, then that then the crowd started to turn on him. So... Once it once that started to yeah, once that started to, to to happen, then he got his little then that that won him over his underdogness and his tenacity won over the the other sort of fighters on the north side and on well, on the Jormungandr side. And then that got him the hair. So his tenacity got him the hair, which got him the underdog story that comes back and defeats him, the serpent. Which, to a certain extent, I don't know whether the, like, there is a certain amount of the the um, fighters want to want to actually end the world. <laughs> Um. Well, I think uh, the biggest part of that isn't so much the ending the world, it's more of he was he, he was seen as representative of them because that's kind of the character he portrayed but I don't know, I Stop well, like well, <laughs> it's you know. Well, I mean, just the fact that you've got, you know, if they if they if they win, see, that's the thing is if Yomungandr's team ever wins, the world ends, and so those fights stop, like the the organized sort of wrestling thing stops, and so and they're not going to. Like, very few actually, you know, if you actually read the Ragnarok story, very few beings actually survive Ragnarok. Like, yeah, there's a handful of of, it's of the gods and their kids the, uh, that survive, but... It's basically, what do you call that Christian thing? Um, yeah, it's, it's basically... A, yeah, it's... No. It's... Uh, restitution? No. <laughs> Rejuvenation? Something like that, where Judgment Day. Yeah, Revelation, and and Armageddon. But yeah, the the uh, but yeah, Ragnarok. There's just there's not a lot of them that survive. And as for humans, there's only two humans that survive Ragnarok, and then and a handful of the Iser, I think, is what they're called. Like a handful of them survive, and so they just sort of start the thing over with. Um, but like Thor's dead, Loki's dead, Odin's dead, like everybody you know is dead except for a handful of like their kids. So, the end of Endgame. <laughs> yeah, it's I mean, just yeah, they just basically everybody you know is dead. There's a handful of second banana characters. Well, that'd be a little mean, but. A handful of second banana characters and uh, and a couple humans on Earth, and everything's sort of been reset. Nature's been sort of reset, and there's only you've sort of been wiped clean, and then you got just two humans left, um, and a handful of icer, and that's it. 
So, I mean, odds are, well, now, yeah, I don't know exactly how, I don't remember exactly how, what it works for, how it works for the, um, the, assuming they're, they're, you know, the people in Valhalla, I forget how that works. I know that they fight, but I don't know what happens to them at the end of Ragnarok, but presumably they're gone too because then you have because they're they're just knocked down quite substantially. It's basically a clearing house of everybody and then just bring everything back down to a handful and yeah. It's simplistic. basically the end of Neon Genesis saving Galeon. Just knock everything down to only a couple people and a few gods. That's it. <laughs> um, like I said, yeah. Ava. But yeah, uh, but anyway, um, yeah. So I mean, if you if you win, you die. So you want to give a good show, but not so good that you die. <laughs> like if you don't win, you get to live and do this again the next the next time it rolls around. <laughs> And who knows? Maybe that's the real reason. That's why they, they always lose. They were looking for an excuse because they're like, oh shit. Shit. These guys aren't as good. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're just... Yeah, they're, they're trying not to... <laughs> they're, 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 doing the, they're doing the job. They're trying to, to, to lose, but lose while looking good. <laughs> yeah. Because um. it's kind of like, you know, when you're a fan of a sports team and they're really, really bad that season, you're like, oh, I still got a root for them because they're my home team, but god damn, they suck. <laughs> yeah, you know that, yeah, yeah, and the crowd is interesting because, yeah, because from their, from their perspective, they win. This all ends, Either and way. they they and you have the end of the world. But if they lose, you know, then the world goes on. So like, you want to root for them to have a good fight, but ultimately lose. <laughs> I think that's basically what the people there have come to. It's like, yeah, I want them to have a good fight. I want the fight to be interesting. But I don't necessarily want them to win. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, any further thoughts? Uh, nope. Yeah, we we. we oh. Jumped around substantially on that one. <laughs> I mean, uh, they didn't need the battle ask, uh, battle axe as if rainbows couldn't get any cooler. <laughs> <laughs> rainbows. Anyway, 